There's a lot of interest in seeing how rural firefighters go about the business of fighting bushfires, so we thought we'd put together a day in the life of one crew from just one brigade to give you a bit of a feel for what can go on. We also sometimes hear questions like, why does it take so long? So we'll see if we can go some way to explaining that too. On this day, we happen to be doing a lot of backburning. Now the idea behind backburning is to burn out the fuel well in advance of the main fire under controlled conditions, so that when the main fire arrives, there's little left to burn. We look for a decent control line, such as a fire trail to work from, and we then set about widening that containment line to try and prevent embers from being able to drift over it into unburnt country and set the fire off again. This isn't directly attacking the fire, like you see, commonly see on the TV. Instead, we're fighting it indirectly. It's not very glamorous. In fact, it's hard, tedious work. It's hot and dirty. And as you'll see, it's hugely labor and time intensive. And there's no guarantee it'll work. A good day today is a burn in, call it 50 metres. Call it 50 metres in, right in, just black there.
we're at four four two three nine four. It's called ladder fuel. Allows the fighter to climb like a ladder up the tree. Thankfully this particular species doesn't actually go that high up the tree trunk and then it goes all smooth. But for a while it'll chuck off embers. It'll fly off downrange. I think you're right, I think you're done. I think you've got the uh, the control lines in just fine.
pushing the heavy stuff further away from the containment line. So have they leapfrogged us or yeah, yeah, okay that's yeah. fair enough we might need to come back and just knock this stuff off just on the uh, right on the edge of the trail yeah, yeah. yeah. anyway uh, let us know when you need us to uh jump ahead of these guys yeah. too Light these things up. Sometimes you use spot patterns. Here we're using a strip lighting pattern. But you try and do these things in manageable size chunks so that it doesn't get away from you. Whatever you light up, you've got to be able to control. So they will be heading up this bulldozer trail up the hill there. Hopefully, all this side of this hill will be gone in the next hour or so. Need a bit of help. An extra length of hose, so Mark on the right there is just unrolling some more hose. We'll need to stop the pressure on this one for a moment, add the new length on when he gives the signal. Pump operator at the moment, that's me. I'll cut the pressure for a moment, they'll let length the hose and we'll repressurize. cut signal raise his hand to indicate water on. Repressurize the hose. Good bit of teamwork, Help dragging the hose around. The hose gets really, really heavy. Jason is doing a great job as a trainee crew leader. He's running around like a blue ass fly, making sure everyone knows what they're meant to be doing and where they're meant to be. Just 
taking a bit of a backward step and keeping a good eye on the bigger picture it's very very easy to get tunnel vision on the end of a hose or on the end of a hand tool you need someone to stand back and see what's going on wider should move up the hill fairly quickly now way off in the distance there see the smoke columns on the hills where the main fire front is Is running up the uh, candle bark tree there. The sooner it does that, the better while it's uh, under control. And there, it's the trees that are close to the edge of the containment line that we're concerned about. We want this stuff to burn. We don't want that stuff to burn on the wrong side of the containment line. That little thing there is a spot fire that's just kicked off. And that is as easy as it happens. Just a few metres ahead, but it doesn't need to be that far to jump. There is a small spot far ahead of the head of the backburn. If it's spotting a little bit like that, you need to be very careful that it doesn't spot this far over over the containment line. Lots of trudging up and down hills and dusty fire trails. Need a truck up there. To be able to move down and keep an eye on the other side of that hill there. So here come the cavalry. Okay there. Yeah, all good, Mark. Thank you, sir. It's a slow, slow business. There's the reinforcements just set up, ready to do jump onto anything that across to the wrong side of the containment line. And you get very, very tired of breathing smoke, even with the P2 masks on, pretty good. But there's just no way of being out of the smoke. It's just all around you so much of the time. More hose dragging. come lighting up the next line so 
So before we were trying to keep the fire out of this little spot, keeping on the other side of this containment line, but now we've done that bit okay, we can do this bit pretty safely. You can see the flames leaning right over with the wind and up the slope. Our rule of thumb is for every 10 degrees of slope, the fire will travel twice as fast. So 20 degrees of slope, it'll go four times as fast. So we've lit this about a quarter of the way up the hill. It'll make its way at the top and then we'll burn this area off once this one's got going and we're out of the way. And from that very little skinny little line, it goes up, up the hill. It's still a relatively low intensity burn. Could be a whole bunch worse under strong winds. So this is behaving pretty well. So Maloon is, we lit up the top part of that, Maloon has lit up the bottom part. We've jumped ahead, we're going to light up this bit now. Yeah, Jason and Harry, doing the first of the light up cruise again. termite mound and tree.
it's gone through, this is what we're looking for. Hollow trees like those two down there. They'll burn for days or weeks and eventually fall over. This one there, it's hollow up the top. And it'll pump sparks. And then there's this one. About 100 metres in, busy chucking sparks out. This one will fall over all by itself within a few hours. But it's those sparks that'll fly. And we don't want those sparks to fly over the containment line. So we might get the bulldozer and knock that particular tree over. Here's that same tree from around the other side. It's mostly dead, just not quite, but it's burning inside. The trees and branches are already starting to fall around us. And about two seconds after I turned the camera off, of course, that fell down right in front of us. I suspect the rest of the tree won't be far behind. And you're only 10 days in. Yeah, okay. I know that doesn't mean a lot to someone like yourself, but it's <laughs> pretty good actually. No, I just really like Mark's encouragement. Ah, yeah, just reset it. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Our pit crew has arrived to help clear out the truck and let all the crew go home as soon as they can. found that interesting and you got a bit of a look at how we go about the backburning part of the business of rural firefighting. So before we finish up we really ought to go back and have a look at how we actually got on with today's backburn. So here's the fire map at the end of the day and you can see all the essential elements of the backburn. Approaching from the southeast of the uh, is the main fire front and here is the containment line that we built during the day. Obviously there's still a lot of work to do 
in uh, future days to finish containing this fire. It's a lot of work, but it's not until you start zooming out and you can see that this is just one small part of a much larger fire itself, just one of many fires that, are, that were burning on this day. Maybe this is why it takes as long as it does.